Being raised in a in a Christian family, uh, actually I didn't know much about God and and the things of God, but. Um, I was growing up and I grew up with my family. I was born in uh, Paracho, Michoacan, um, in Mexico. At a young age, um, I was brought over here to, to California. I lived over here in California and uh, I grew up right there in California and I lived uh, a destructive life right there. I had a troubled youth at a really young age. Around 15, 16, uh, I started getting involved with people that use drugs. I started using drugs um, like alcohol, started smoking pot, started uh, using meth, and uh, one thing led to another, and I kept on growing up in a, in a destructive way, and uh, it was all all downhill from there. Uh, I grew up, um, I grew older, and uh, I started uh, selling drugs and I seen that money was coming real quick and honestly I didn't need the money but the money was easy so I kept on selling drugs I got involved with the wrong people making a lot of enemies when you're in the drug business there's a lot of people that envy you once you start coming up uh, real quick and uh, I got a, a few enemies got involved in, in fights, got, uh, I've been shot at, I've, I've shot at people, and uh, one thing led to another, and, and uh, I committed a murder. After that, I got arrested, and I went, I went to trial, and I was fighting my case. It's a horrible thing to fight a case for, for murder. Uh, most of the people fighting a case for murder, they get life in prison. And uh, that's what happened to me. Uh, I got convicted of, uh, of murder. I was sentenced to 25 to life. And uh, I found myself in prison. And uh, I had an emptiness in me. Although I had made money, although I had women, I had drugs. Once you get to a point where you're in prison, you're by yourself. And all that, that I was doing it was in vain. And now I have an emptiness inside of me. So what do I do? I look for God. And I kept looking for God, just trying to search for Him. I had never read the Bible. The first time I read the Bible was in, a, in county jail. I couldn't understand anything. I couldn't understand about Jesus dying for us in the cross. I couldn't understand uh, that Jesus Christ forgives our sin. I couldn't understand none of that. I read the whole Bible, complete Old Testament and New Testament. It didn't touch me. But once I got to reception, uh, I came across um, a brother in Christ named Alex. We were in the day room. I used to hang out because I run with the Paisas. I'm a Christian, but I run with the Paisas right here in prison. And I, uh, I met this brother, and he was sitting on a day room table. And he was reading the Bible with another brother. And I was on another table uh, playing dominoes. While I was playing dominoes, I was just clowning with, with the paisas, hanging out right there, you know, doing stuff that that is no good. But there was this presence that, that moved me. I believe it was the Holy Spirit that moved me to that table. It, I didn't want to go at first because being a person without God, we used to make fun of people that, that used to follow Christ. But now I see that something was drawing me to that table. So I go to that table and that brother tells me that Jesus loves me. That brother tells me that I can be forgiven for my sin. And God touched my heart right there. And since that, since that moment, I've never been the same. God came into my life. The Holy Spirit came into my heart. And I'm a new, new creation. From there on, I have changed my ways. I don't use drugs. I don't drink alcohol. Uh, I'm not involved in any illegal activity. I serve the Lord now. Like the Word of God says that we are a new creature in Jesus Christ. And ever since then, my life has changed. God has given me a calling in this yard right here in Calipatria A Yard. I've been here for three years. The first six months that I was here on this yard, God 
God called me into the ministry as an inmate pastor. I've been serving the Lord ever since, and it's been a wonderful, beautiful experience. And it's nothing that that I can I can express with uh, with words. It's something beautiful. I encourage everybody that that is using drugs that thinks that that there's no way out. There is a way out. Jesus Christ is the way out. Jesus Christ can forgive your sin. Jesus Christ can transform you. He can He can help you leave those those bad habits. Only He can do it. That that's the only way I I was able to do it. And also, it can make you so you can have actual peace in prison. I mean. Yeah, I can actually have peace, like like uh, Brother Larry says. I can actually have pre peace in prison. I can actually walk right here in Calipatra A yard. A GP yard and walk in peace. I don't. I'm not worried about what's going to happen because I know that God is with me, and I know that He will protect me. Like Psalm 91 says, uh, "He who abides uh, on the shadow of the mighty will be covered by the omnipotent." God is with us, and I'm thankful to the Lord for everything that He's done in my life, and I encourage everybody that's watching Jesus Christ is the only way he is the way the truth and the life and without him we can't come to the Father it is only through him that we can be saved it is only through him that we can receive that peace that overpasses any understanding come to Christ I live a joyful life a life of peace I believe that the Lord is so great that he is going to allow me to be out on the streets once again with my family. That is the faith that God has given me. And I encourage everybody that's watching this to come to him. He is the only way. Amen. Amen.